Hello and good evening from Sweden. This is H572 and this is directed to you Pete Green over there in the States and maybe John is going to join us if this video is not too messy or unclear. But among me and my co author Kalle Lundahl here, there, is some, there are some questions that popped up, but also in the group which I have contact with. And uh, since I am the spider in the net when it comes to ask questions and I'm not able to ask them, so I send the questions over the pond to you guys over there in the States. Hello. Um, just let me mention the uh, environment here. We're a bit outside Gothenburg. It's called Lindome. And actually, John, this is not far from Frillesås. This is a whopping 20 minutes from Frillesås. And it's smack right on the west coast. And today we've been uh, to a neighborhood uh, wild reserve and uh, I had a swim in the lake and the water is still quite warm here about 13 14 degrees but uh, it's getting cold nice and windy tonight and not too cold so let me get on with the questions and uh, well, it's, it's no small questions. Uh, it's about the four aspects of uh, posture release imagery. And I had a lecture some time ago, and there was a lot of uh, queries popping up. And one has to do with this architecture typical archetypal uh, imagery that they come from some ancestral animal and the question is uh, we do understand the development from the uh, for instance the turtle or the flounder or uh, the mantare uh, what do you call that in English uh, the manta the manta the that fish and other animals they have a very clear dorsal area that goes up into the sky like a geodome and uh, i understand tensegrity and that the force should go outwards and i usually take the example with the globen in stockholm which is one of the biggest tensegrity edifices in the world and it doesn't weigh much because it uses its weight to sort of reinforce itself. And it's also understandable that the heavy weight goes downwards into the ventral area or expanding from uh, or directed from the ventral area. And that should be more tensed. And it goes hand in hand with what I know about buildings. But what we don't understand, uh, and this is more of an open question, why do we need to know this? Uh, has something happened to human beings? We became twist, so twisted in evolution because it's very hard to see which area is dorsal, which is ventral. And I usually show people this is like the back of the turtle, but for some reason this is Well, this is front, the legs is front, and this is the back, and the, the both dorsal. And that's because of evolution. Could that be the reason? Or are there might, might be some other reason for this effect? That was one question. And the other one, what happens if you don't have these dorsal and ventral areas that are perfectly uh, balanced in, an, uh, in a tortoise or a turtle. Uh, what happens in human beings when it's not too balanced? If we're too tensed in 
for instance, the back region, region over here, what happens? What do we miss out on? And there is another question when it comes to imagery, and, uh, and that came actually from an Alexal teacher. And she knows that it's a big problem when you have a, a student, you show the student something and they tend to do something by doing, and that should be avoided. And uh, as we understand the idea, the imagery should be a segue away from uh, uh, doing, because you're just imaging things. But that is actually a big tough nut to crack because often I notice when I study people and we do some imaging, imaging they do actually tense anyway. And uh, maybe there is a little hint or I found in some of the texts that you wrote, John, that it might be that you have to develop this and train it to know the difference between doing and just imaging. Uh, and the questions in is are in that case how often should you do that and how much time will it take uh, one of the group members is still doing a lot of doing uh, even if she has her eyes shut or eyes open it doesn't really matter it's an apparent movement and she says she's doing imagery but is still moving uh, or do you have also maybe some tips how to progress this work because it's quite tough and uh, I also notice myself that sometimes I do imaging and I actually end up doing stuff uh, and one question that could also be we are not very visual people it's a strain I notice for most of the people in the group even to do some visual and one person uh, just says everything is black, she doesn't see anything, and I don't think that is too uncommon. Uh, and I discussed that uh, with a friend of mine who is a neuro neurologist, and the skill to visualize is very much connected to how skilled you are in motor sense. And a person who doesn't practice much motor sense, don't, don't, uh, who doesn't do anything skilled work, won't be able to visualize. It's a very varied uh, skill among people and there's a large percentage of the population who don't see anything at all. And I think that's called aphantasia with the modern word, that it's complete black. It's not unusual, but something, however, uh, that can be trained by uh, practice of some skilled work. Uh, I heard that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, learning, le learning some complicated motor skill, uh, uh, like uh, doing darts, help a friend of mine visualizing. It took a while, it took, I think it took a year to get some basic sense of imagery. So this is the question I posed her, uh, how do you develop the difference between imaging and imitating? Can it be learned and uh, how does it happen? How do you notice that you're actually imaging and not doing something? Because that seems to be one of the main problems. That was some questions, let's see here. Uh, when we run into these difficulties, could there be some ideal uh, situation to train? Should one set aside maybe 20 minutes to do the training of imagery? Or uh, should it be done when you're doing something else? 
I perceive it to be very easy while driving because uh, then my mind is partly set on something uh, and uh, but I still have enough room to do imagery so that's quite good for me and I also feel like moving in the direction of the car I think you should put it down actually to be honest the, the camera because it's uh, I can see the camera is moving uh, be a video problem there and that brings me into the next next question here uh, and it's about uh, direction and I thought it was very good like both walking I do the Nordic walk with sticks and then I have sort of a direction and I think uh, you John you recommended that and we thought that to be very interesting could you possibly develop that a little bit because walking with a, the Nordic walk with the sticks you get a sort of swaying movement like this and uh, is that helpful uh, and it has to do something with the dorsal ventral parts or is it more connected to the left uh, what is that called the left lateral side i think left lateral side and right lateral side something to do with lateralization uh, not 100 percent clear about that but i do enjoy my nordic walk although it looks odd to do it you're supposed to be 65 here in sweden to do it so i have to do it in the woods where nobody can see and uh, let's see here something that could be very helpful uh, have a, a some set of imagery and have a gradation which imagery is more difficult which is more less difficult because we noticed here if you try one imagery and it's very difficult that person will give up afterwards uh, trying three four weeks or a month uh, and you still don't get the image in, into your head that would be too much of a strain to ask for so easier imagery or I mean a sort of gradation this is an easy image to sort of uh, fantasize or have in the head that's a good start uh, nota bene uh, as well some of the easier that look easy like the ice cone uh, or the ice cycle is very hard for some people to imagine I noticed they, they complain about it because it's too easy it tends to rotate in, in, in the head and another complaint I've gotten is that uh, when they see themselves with the darkened areas and the brighter areas it, ten it tends to reverse inside the head and that's a very very common feature if you don't practice motor skills because uh, then you don't get a stable imagery uh, so we discussed this a bit that uh, visualization is not not something we're born with any one of us and uh, there's also huge cultural differences especially people who can't do imagery at all uh, they don't have that skill it's it has to do what you do with your hands and the whole body so it's about movement and it's about directed movement and uh, it does actually give a good understanding to what posture release also could be expressed as if thinking is a movement posture release imagery is a sort of movement thinking movement and you train that but uh, could be a problem could be a very large step if you don't have visualization which like maybe the majority don't uh, because they work in with computers or even if they do something no skilled work outside uh, one of the guys uh, is a farmer 
you don't develop uh, his specialization skill yet. He says his inside is blurry pictures only. Uh, so would would there be any recommendation? I know you, John, is a good. You are a good carpenter, and Pete, you're a dancer. So of course you either had some very good skills from the beginning, or but most certain you develop those as time passed by. But you need need it in the work. Well, I think it's sort of interesting. <clears throat> And I think, uh, I think this has to be in two parts, but I have another question. You can hear here, it's a loads of question. And the last question is about this movement, uh, this uh, almost like a lizard movement or a snake movement. And uh, I've been trying to explain this, but there we have three parts, the rudder, the motor and the director. Uh, and that is a frozen movement that is like a wave. And somewhere uh, there, my explanation power was stranded. stranded. So if I could get some visual to that, to understand better. Uh, and I also found some pictures here. Like this one. And we really tried to find, find out the meaning. So we could need some help with that. Let's... Uh, And I notice that also go into the different personality types. Uh, what better than to make a demonstration? I'll ask my colleague here, Kalle, to volunteer. I just have a sip of coffee here. We're using this American inspired coffee cup today. <laughs> with uh, uh, Simpson. Simpson, yeah. <clears throat> and as you know, it's still quarter to 11 and we, we're still drinking coffee because we're Swedes. I think we, we end the whole evening with some other stuff. Uh, I just want to demonstrate uh, what people will be asking. Uh, do open your hands. Uh, but I have under understood this hard area this where the skin is not ticklish is the dorsal and we also wondered why is that area not ticklish we understand the principle but is it because that used to be the outer surface of the body whereas the inner goes downwards and is that's not exposed to the nature wind or sun for instance and this is of course ticklish and here comes the seam and it goes in between the fingers. I think we got that clear. But when you come into the body here, uh, we got a question here. And you can hear, guys, there's a lot of tricky questions coming up. And it's, should you imagine your body like sideways or should you imagine it front? Because that makes a difference. Uh, it makes a big difference when you think about the seam. Because if you, if you have a frontal perspective, it's very hard to get the seam. You don't have much seam here. Because you just, you know, it's just uh, ventral here and it changes into ventral here on the back side. But if you are on the, on the profile here, you have a much clearer idea of where the seam is going. And um, I got the perception, I, I'm not sure about this. It's like a whole science in, in itself, this with visualization and talking to people, how, how do you see? But it seems that once you started to imagine one, like the front part, it's very hard to switch to the sideways. Uh, 
uh, and then you have to do the whole thing up again. You have to imagine once more. Uh, and uh, if I get it right, uh, like, uh, uh, well, they're like four or five in the group right now, and two people, uh, two, three people I haven't had a phone. But it seems the first couple of months is everything is so blurry, so you don't really see the body inside the head. But then it's clear enough you can even put in a seam or a line. Or I think the first thing they try to do is to have a difference between dorsal and ventral. But at least the first two months that seem to be very hard to do because we don't see our body in, in, inside for our mind's eye. And then I imagine it goes down here. And uh, people often ask, uh, there should be no tension, not much tension in front here. This is dorsal, should be expanded. And that seemed to go hand in hand with how the body works, actually, that the tension should be here on the back. Is that correct? And this should be like an outer surface. Because there used to be the surface that went into the air with the turtles and the manta and all that, all those animals. Could that be a clue to the whole thing? Uh, that was actually what we discussed last in the group. Uh, that uh, these parts are supposed to be the parts of the turtle that goes up in the air and therefore they should not be tense. They don't, don't have a bear bearing function as uh, when we talk about the geodome going downwards is the bearing function that's where the structure's weight is coming down to whereas the upper part of the dome that's where all the energy or the force go outside and that strengthens the whole structure so this should open up and uh, i try to add that the space around sort of helps because I was figuring it needs to be a lot of space around to expand into and we tried that a couple of times and that seemed to be helping a lot I don't know what you think about that uh, but thinking of loads of space around us that there is here around we have mountains and everything and if I ask Kalle to imagine that as well, like you have loads of space above you and around you, there is a very apparent change directly here. It can actually be seen. So that seemed to do the trick. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Pia, she, if you bend there and you, yeah. Pia asked, she's an Alexander teacher, if it could be good to put this into together with the monkey somehow. And having like, uh, or was it Eva? I think it was Eva. She said that this could be a better position because then you are closer to uh, the tripartition between uh, rudder, motor and director. Because I think here it's the motor. Yeah, must be, yeah. And this part is the, uh, the rudder and this is the director. And here, just think expands here. It's, yeah, yeah. And you can easily see it. Uh, it shows better also uh, in, in the bodily structure. But that's uh, just a hypothesis. Uh, I'll let you decide, you are the experts in this area. We're just happy amateurs over here in Sweden. Uh, and uh, I think it's better to round up here. I think there's a lot of questions anyway. Uh, but I want, want to thank Kalle for his help and efforts. And uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, participating in this 
idea of spreading PRI into Sweden as well. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.